Hey everyone, thanks for joining us on the channel today. If you're new here, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So if you're like me and love flying in VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator, then you're going to know that getting it to run smooth with the best picture quality may be a little bit of a hassle. Well, that's where the OpenXR Toolkit comes in, and we're going to be modeling version 1.0.5 today. So we're going to show you how to use this to get the best picture quality and performance out of Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're going to go through a full tutorial on where to download, how to install, and more importantly, how to use and adjust all the functions within the OpenXR Toolkit. So if that interests you, then I think you should stay tuned for today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. All right, welcome back everyone. So let's dive right into this today, but I do want to start off by saying that this video is completely timestamped. So if you already have the OpenXR toolkit, go down below, check out the timestamp section. You can skip to whatever part that you would like. For everyone else, we're going to go through the full download tutorial and show you where to get this and how to install it first. So if this video does help you out today, be sure to go down below and hit that subscribe, tick the little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. While you're down there, links for all of the downloads will be in the description, so be sure to check those out as well. So when you click on the download link, it will open you up to the OpenXR Toolkit main page. Over here on the left, we have a bunch of different menus that can help with troubleshooting, roadmaps, change logs, and other various features, as well as some good documentation for the FS2020. Once you're done reviewing all of that, you can come over here to the quick start menu and it will put you back to this main setup page. Again, this has a bunch of good information on it. You can scroll through that and check it out. I highly recommend that you do. Now, while we're going through this, if anybody has any questions, please post those down below in the comments section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So the first thing that we want to do is click on the download latest version button. When we do that, download will populate in our web browser toolbar and we're going to allow that to finish. When it does, we can just go ahead and left click on that to open it up. And when we do, you're going to get a Windows protected your PC pop up. That's OK. Just hit the more info button and then run anyway. If you have previously installed the OpenXR toolkit and are updating to a newer version, I highly recommend you to remove the old OpenXR toolkit first. So in my situation, I currently have the OpenXR toolkit. So we're just going to hit the remove button and then finish, and it will completely remove that out of our system. Once that has finished, we can go ahead and hit the close button. Now we are all set to start with the new download. You can either hit the download latest again, and it will populate back in your web browser, or you can go to your contents manager and open up the location of the download file. So I'm just going to click on that one more time, hit more info, and then hit the run anyway icon. Next, we just need to walk through the menus here by clicking on the next button at the bottom, and it will go ahead and install the OpenXR toolkit for us on our PC. Once that is finished, we can go ahead and hit the close button on that, and we are all set to go with that portion. As well as the website, we're all finished with that, so we can either close or minimize that. Now, once we have finished the download and install, you're gonna notice a new icon that's gonna appear on your desktop. At this point, we can go ahead and double click on the OpenXR Toolkit Companion application and then hit the Yes. Once we have this open, at the very top of the OpenXR Toolkit, we are going to see here highlighted in green that the OpenXR Toolkit Beta Version 3 is active. So that's a good sign, lets us know everything is running in the background. Next, let's run through all of the different features of this application. The first option here we have is to disable the OpenXR Toolkit completely. So for those of you who may want to see the difference with the OpenXR Toolkit running and without it running, you do not have to uninstall the application completely. We can just come in here and tick on the disable button. Below that, we have the enable safe mode. If you want to recover uh, anything, you can go ahead and use that. Below that, we have the enable experimental settings. And I recommend to check that because that's going to unleash some extra features for us inside the application. Below that, we have the enable screenshot, and this is pretty cool because we can take screenshots right within the OpenXR toolkit, and it may help out while we're in VR. And then below that, we have the in-headset menu visibility. 
Now this is going to be very helpful if you're using a very wide field of view headset. When you open the menu in VR mode, you may have an issue trying to get both eyes to sync up in a very wide field of view headset. So it may be in your best interest to either choose right or left eye. But you want to make sure that you do that before you open up the sim. So here's where you would do that. Below that, we can set up all of our hotkeys for operating the menu system within the OpenXR Toolkit. I leave all mine as default, and as you can see here, we can change each of these. All you have to do is hit the drop down and choose the key that you would like to bind to. The modifiers are below, and we can either choose Control or the Alt key, and I leave it under the Control key. What that means for you is to use any of the hotkeys here, F1, F2, or F3, we must first press the control key followed by that F1, F2, or F3 to use it within the menus. We'll get into that a little bit later. Below that we have the log file as well as the screenshot folder. And down here in the lower right hand corner, probably the most important, is to check for a newer version. When we click on this, it's going to open up a web page. And here we can check for the next version, if there is one, and we can just verify it or cross check it with the version we have here at the top. Once you have all your settings set correct, we can go ahead and close out of that. And we are pretty much done with the OpenXR Toolkit Companion. Now, before we open up Microsoft Flight Simulator, I know people want to jump right into it. There's a couple extra settings that we need to make sure of before we open the sim. Now, those are either going to be in the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality, or if you're a Steam VR user, it's going to be in your Steam VR settings. So let's go through some of these right now. In the Windows Mixed Reality, there's a couple things that we want to make sure that you have set correctly here. Oh, and by the way, if you do not have the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality, all you need to do is to go down to your lower left hand corner, click on the start, go over to the Microsoft Store, and then just type in OpenXR. When you do, you're gonna see the OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality come up. Just left click on that and then you can hit the install button. Now, as you see, I have an update here for that. So make sure that you're updating this regularly. Now let's go through some of the settings that you're gonna to need to make sure are correct in your OpenXR tools for Windows Mixed Reality. First, I wanna make sure that the use latest preview for OpenXR runtime is ticked on. And then underneath of that is probably the most important with the render settings. You can either do it one of two ways, either leave this off or you can hit custom render scale and choose 100%. It's very important that you choose 100% because we're going to adjust all of our scaling now within the sim using the OpenXR toolkit. Below that we have motion reprojection. And for this part of it, while you're still trying to dial in settings, I recommend to leave any motion reprojection or motion smoothing off. Once you get all your settings dialed in, then you can come back in internal motion reprojection if you wish to. But you may find that the sim is now running smooth enough that you don't need to use any motion reprojection. All right, so now that we've gone over Windows Mixed Reality, let's jump over here to Steam VR settings and talk about these for a second. These settings can be adjusted in your general tab and we just want to make sure again that motion smoothing is turned off and that the resolution per eye is set to 100%. Again, you can set it to auto, but if you want to make sure that everything is set correctly, just put it to custom, set it to 100% and we are set to go. Perfect. So now that we've got your Steam VR settings and the Windows Mixed Reality settings set up properly, now at this point, we can open up Microsoft Flight Simulator. So let's get that going and I'll meet everybody back inside the sim. Welcome back everyone. We are now inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator and I've kind of got it set up a little bit weird. So I've got my mirror image over here on the right and I've got the regular image over here on the left. So this is what you would see if you took your headset off and you were just looking at your screen you would see that. But there's a reason for that, and I just wanna keep the mirror image up here on the right here. All right, so to open up the OpenXR Toolkit, we're gonna to hit the Control and F2 key on our keyboard. Once that opens, you're gonna notice that we have a couple different menu options here at the very top. We have Performance, Appearance, Inputs, and Menu. We're gonna go through each one of these individually, starting with the Performance tab. To move up and down, again, you're going to use the control and either F1, F2, or F3 keys to move around. 
Instructions are at the bottom of the menu. So we're going to hit the Control and F2 key, and the first option we have here is the overlay. Now, of course, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you turn that on, you can see we have an FPS overlay that just showed up on our screen. Now, this is going to be very handy if you're going to be trying to mess around with settings to get the very best FPS and quality smoothness of the picture while you're adjusting everything. But once you're done adjusting everything, it is recommended to turn the FPS off. And the reason for that is they have said in previous revisions that the FPS counter can hit on your performance just a bit. So just to be on the safe side, turn it off when you don't need it. So underneath of the overlay is the upscaling option. And that's pretty much the whole point of the OpenXR toolkit is so that we can scale the image down and then upscale it back to our headset resolution. This is what's going to allow us to have all of our render resolution set to 100%. So let's go through this real quick and show you how to set this up for your needs. To turn this on, we're going to either move it over to NIS or FSR. NIS is the NVIDIA scaling tool. The FSR is the AMD version of the scaling tool. Now don't get this confused that you have to use the NIS with NVIDIA and the FSR with AMD. You can switch this around and use whichever works best for your system. In my case, I'm using a 3080 Ti with an Intel i9 processor, and for me, the NIS scaling works the best. Below that, we have what's called anamorphic scaling. So we're going to get into that in just a second. If we take a look at the menu underneath of the anamorphic scaling, the size menu, we see here that we have a pixel size of 3160 by 3088. If we change this size, it will change the size on a linear scale to where they're both changing at the same rate. So what the anamorphic scaling is going to do is give us a little bit more control of the pixel size. So if we turn this on, we are now able to adjust the pixel width as well as the pixel height. For some people, this may be a great option, but for me, I like to just leave this in the off position. So let's move back down underneath of the anamorphic scaling and let's go back to the size scaling just one more time. So now what size do you want to scale this to? Well, let's talk about that real quick. If you were to spawn into the sim at whichever airport that you'd like, and at 100% resolution, what kind of performance do you get? Do you have low FPS? Do you have a lot of stuttering? Or do you have a lot of lag in that picture? Well, here's where we're going to adjust to help with the performance and the stuttering. So what you would want to do is to turn this down to, let's say, 70% to start with. And this all depends on the system and the hardware that you're using. You can start with 80%, you can start with 70%. The whole idea is to start with a lower percentage and then we're gonna work our way up the scale. First, you would wanna start with that lower percentage and when you are adjusting the size here, you do have to exit your VR session and re-enter. You can do that either by hitting the control tab key or going inside the menu inside Microsoft Flight Simulator the general menu and turn your VR on and off. So once you exit your VR session and enter back in, you will now be able to check and see the performance that you're getting inside the sim. If your performance has gotten a lot better now and you don't have the stuttering or any of that, don't worry about the picture quality just yet. Let's worry about performance first. So the next thing we wanna do if you've got good performance is to now start increasing the percentage here. So what I recommend to do is, of course, start at an airport that gives you probably one of the poorest performances and use that as a baseline. So this way, you know that if you're getting good performance there, you'll get good performance everywhere else. Maybe start increasing the size 5% each time. You're going to exit your VR session, re-enter your VR session, and again, check and see the performance that you're getting. You're going to continually do this all the way up into a point to where you're going to now start to induce stutters, lag, and different performance issues. Once you get to that point, we can then come in here and back it off about 5 or 10%. 
Start with five and see what that does. Then you can load back into your VR session and check the performance that you're getting inside the sim. If your performance is adequate, then we are all set to go to move to the next step. Here's where we're going to adjust the picture to get better picture quality and clarity through the headset. So we're going to move down to the sharpness setting here, and this is where we're going to be able to introduce some sharpening effects to our image quality to help make it a little bit more clearer coming through our headset. Again, you're going to start with the lowest setting here, and we're going to continually work up. So once you've increased that sharpening up to a point to where you start introducing some artifacting around your gauges or the trees or anything, once you start noticing that, then you just want to back that sharpening off maybe 5 or 10% again. The one thing with the sharpening is you do not have to exit your VR session when you're adjusting this. We can move on to the next item, which is the MIP map bias. And all quite honestly, I have no idea what this is. So if you do, leave a comment down below in the comment section and let me know what MIP map bias means. If you are using a headset that is a mixed reality headset like the HP Reverb G2, this allows us to lock the motion reprojection at a particular frame rate. So what this is going to allow us to do, if you are using motion reprojection, you're able to adjust the motion reprojection FPS. So it will no longer be up to the OpenXR mixed reality to decide on what FPS it's going to be using. You can come in here and select 45, 30, or 22.5. Just keep in mind that if you select 30 FPS and you're only getting 25 FPS, that locking it at 30 is not going to give you 30 FPS. Below that is probably one of the other highlights of this toolkit, which is the fixed foveated rendering. This is the reason why I wanted to set the screen up like this, so you can get a better idea and understanding of what fixed foveated rendering is going to do. When we go down there, we have two different options. We can either pick preset or we can choose custom on the right. I prefer to choose custom because I'm able to customize everything that I want with my fixed foveated rendering. So one thing you're going to notice over on the left here is you're going to see those fixed foveated rendering rings. So I'm going to make it a little more predominant here by just adjusting. OK, so now I've adjusted some of my resolutions here so that we can better identify the ring position over on the left. Again, what you're seeing on the left hand side of the screen is what you would see if you take your headset off. This is also going to add a great performance increase when we are able to adjust the resolution down in certain parts of the image, especially when we can't actually get full definition out of the headset anyway when we're looking at certain parts of the lens. For instance, everyone knows that if you look straight ahead in our headset, we have a sweet spot, and that's going to give us the clearest picture of all. If you look anywhere else around that lens, the image can start to distort and get a little bit blurry looking. So that means that we don't really have to have our GPU rendering those areas that we can't really see in high def anyway. It will then prevent them from rendering that in high def and thus saving a little bit of performance. All right, so let's take a look at the image over here on the left and we can clearly see the ring sizes within this picture. We have the inner ring here and we have our middle ring here and then the outer ring is right over here. And you can see the clear difference here, the, the line for where they separate. So now that you understand the premise behind the rings and allowing for more performance, by decreasing the resolution. Now I want to show you how to set up each of these ring sizes for your particular headset. At this point, what we can do is initially set some of these to what I have here, and then we're going to go through and set these up a little bit more specifically in here in a second. So just go ahead and set your inner ring to 60, your resolution to an eighth, your outer ring to 80, and the outer resolution to a 16th. So once we got that done, if you have your headset off, you can put your headset back on at this point. 
So now that your headset is on, look straight ahead and your image should be pretty clear. Now that's because you're looking right in the center of the sweet spot. Now what I want you to do is start to look around with your eyes, but keep your head steady. So I want you to look up, to the left, down, and to the right. And I want you to do that until the point to where you start seeing some distortion start to happen in the image, where the image starts to get blurry for you. For instance, if we look over here on the left, if I'm looking up towards the top of the menu and I start seeing the image start to get blurry here, or I'm looking at the bottom of the menu and I'm starting to see it get blurry down here, well, that tells me that I do not need all this extra area here to be in high definition quality. Same thing down here. I don't need all of this area to be in high definition quality because when I look through the headset, it doesn't give me that visual clarity anyway, just because of the way the lenses are. So now what we want to do is open up the XR toolkit and we can adjust that inner ring size accordingly. So you can either decrease that size and you can see that ring moving over here on the left or we can increase that size. Now I'm not sure if you can see this but if we look at the writing right here where it says flight mode as I'm decreasing this you can see the image start to degrade. So depending on when you were looking around in your headset where the image started getting blurry you can reduce the inner ring size down to about where it was getting blurry when you were looking through your headset the first time. So once we get to that point, then you can stop there and we can move to the next. The middle resolution, I always like to keep on half resolution. And the reason for that is because I usually keep my inner ring narrowed down. So half resolution will probably be the best for me because I'll still be able to get the same visual quality as I normally would have with 100% resolution just because the lenses don't permit me to see that type of high resolution. I hope that makes some sense and if anybody has any questions along the way, please post those down below in the comments. Next is your outer ring size. The outer ring size I like to keep at either 1 16th resolution or I'll keep at 1 8th resolution. Most of the time, 1 8th is gonna be the best for me. Now what you need to do is to put your headset back on and look straight ahead. Now you may notice that you're having some artifacting around either the outside edges of your headset, or you could have some artifacting around that second ring of your headset. So if you are getting artifacting on any of the rings, that tells you that the resolution is just not high enough in that area to give you a good image. All right, so we need to fix that. And to fix that, we just need to come back over here to our settings and we can adjust things accordingly. So if we are having some artifacting in our middle ring, that tells us that the middle ring resolution or the area that you're getting the artifacting needs to be brought up in resolution just a bit. Now, because we are not able to adjust the middle resolution up any higher than half, what we need to do is adjust the size of the inner ring to be a little bit bigger to encompass that area that we were getting the artifacting. So we would just go up a little bit on the inner ring size until we see that artifacting go away. Once that has occurred, then you can stop increasing the size of the inner ring. Now we want to adjust the size of our outer ring. Again, this is gonna be on the very outside edges of our headset. So if we're looking straight ahead in our peripheral, you may see some artifacting around the very outside edges. Now there's two ways that you can try to clear this situation up. You can either come in here and change the resolution and make the resolution a little bit higher, or we can choose to make the outer ring a little bit bigger which will then put it out of our peripheral vision or our field of view. And then we can keep the outer resolution as low as we want to save on performance. But the, again, depending on the field of view of your headset, you may or may not be able to push that outer ring out far enough to really do anything. So I leave my outer ring at 80% and the outer resolution at 1 8th. So it's not exactly a 16th, but I still get the performance gain there. So now that we have gone through all of these settings and 
how to really dial in your inner, middle, and outer rings. Now we're going to go down below to where it says prefer resolution. So what prefer resolution is going to do, it's going to change the perspective, I guess you can say, of these rings. What I mean by that is these rings are not exactly perfectly round. They're kind of in an oval shape. Now we can choose to either have in a vertical position oval or a horizontal position oval, depending on where we want the level of clarity. So underneath of that, we have horizontal and vertical offset as well as horizontal scale. So what the horizontal and vertical offset's gonna do, it's going to actually take these rings and shift them either to the left, to the right, or up or down. So remember, if we have any artifacting in any part of our image, that tells us that we just don't have enough resolution in that area to give us a decent image so you get artifacting. So if you have an area of your image, say on the lower right, the right hand corner, the left hand side, lower left, upper right, it doesn't really matter, but most likely it will be on the corners or the edges. If you have that happen, now you can adjust your offsets to move your rings around a little bit to get that resolution in the right spot. So for me, I was having an issue where I was having some artifacting down here on the lower right-hand corner and the right-hand side. So by decreasing the horizontal offset and increasing my vertical offset, brought that image over a little bit and down and got rid of all the artifacting because it put that in the area of the ring that gave it more definition. So therefore, it eliminated the artifacting. All right, so now that we've gone through this menu, let's move over to the appearance and go through these. Now, I went through a video on this just the other day, and I'll post that down below in the description section if you'd like to check out how to get some of the best picture quality out of the HP Reverb G2. Now, for this particular section, I do recommend to go into the Microsoft Config settings and turn off all of your post-processing for the sim. And that's going to allow you to really adjust and hone in these settings. It will also help increase performance a little bit. You're not requiring the SIM to add any post-processing. We're doing all that through the OpenXR Toolkit. First item down here is the brightness. That's pretty self-explanatory. For the HP Reverb G2, I recommended between 40 and 45 on the brightness. Below that we have contrast. And anybody who's using a VR headset nowadays knows that if you get in a dark area or you're trying to look in at dark instruments or something, they don't really look black. Dark areas aren't necessarily dark, they're kind of gray. So by turning down the brightness and increasing our contrast will enhance those dark areas for us. That's really gonna be a positive for us with these headsets because if you like doing night flying, that's really going to increase the immersion of your night flights. Below that we have the saturation level and that's another reason why I really recommend to turn off your post-processing because Microsoft Flight Simulator adds a ton of saturation to the image and in my opinion oversaturates everything in a VR headset. So this will allow us to adjust the saturation to our personal liking and for me I set it on 52. Oh, and keep in mind that all of these settings are able to be adjusted without exiting your VR session. So you can see what's gonna happen, you know, real time when you're adjusting these. All right, so beneath that, we have the world scale. And let's talk a little bit about what this does for you because not a lot of people understand what this is gonna do. For somebody that has never really been in a cockpit, this may be a little bit hard to adjust. So I'm gonna show you a simple and easy way to adjust this. What world scale is gonna do is make things look either bigger or smaller inside the cockpit. So for somebody that's never sat inside of a cockpit before, the, the best way that I could tell you to adjust this is to use your seat as a guide. So what you would want to do is to put on your headset, get in the cockpit, sit in the seat, and then look down at your seat in the headset and remove the headset and take a look and see if your body matches up with the seat inside the cockpit when you put your headset on. Most likely, your body is gonna be bigger than the seat that you're sitting inside the cockpit. So that's where we can go for the world scale and we can adjust this to make it a little bit bigger. 
So if we go up in value, it is going to increase the size of the cockpit. So what I recommend to do, again, is just to continually increase the world scale by doing what I told you, by looking down at your seat, removing your headset, putting it back on, and just seeing if you, your physical body, lines up in relation to the virtual world inside of your headset. Oh, and if this content is helping you out today, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick the little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. So below the world scale, we have field of view. I leave this on simple. I don't mess with it, as well as the adjustment stays on 100%. Next, at the top, we have inputs, and here we can adjust the shaking reduction for our headset. If you're using a valve index or something that's using base station tracking, this in particular is not too important to me. I didn't really notice shaking too much when I was on my valve, but when I moved to the HP Reverb G2, the tracking on it is... Um, well, it's got uh, some to be desired. <laughs> so by adding a negative percent here on the shaking reduction can help out with some of those shakes that you can experience inside of the HP Reverb G2 and just smooth things out a little bit. We move over to the menu. We have a couple settings in here. Again, we can adjust our expert settings, turn them on or off, adjust the font size. The menu timeout is gonna adjust how long the menu is gonna stay on your screen for. We have a short, medium, and long, and below that we have the menu eye offset. What this is gonna do is change the offset of the menu for the OpenXR toolkit in each eye. So if they're off a little bit, you can adjust them to mesh them up so it looks like one image and not a double image. And if for some reason you really screw things up, you can go down and hit the restore defaults and it will change everything back to the way it was as normal. Just keep in mind when you do that, all of these settings here in the performance are going to be lost. Oh no. So make sure you take a screenshot, a picture, or write it down because um, you don't wanna to have to go through all that over again. All right, so I think that's gonna just about finish us up for today's video. Thanks everybody for joining us here on the channel. If you have any questions, post those down below in the comment section. And if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe, tick the little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see everybody on the next one. Thanks for watching.